Today's episode, while the Denver Nuggets are the champions, are they going to repeat? I don't think so. There's about eight to ten teams, though, who I do think have the opportunity, and I'll let you know exactly what each one of them needs to and should do in order to give themselves a chance to dethrone the big dumb Serbian and his crew, plus, 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 plus Memphis Grizzlies fans. The internet is undefeated, and John Morant is still the victim. Holy Lord. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's another episode of the Tricky Guy Sports Podcast. It's your host, Brent Bilski, a.k.a. Double B. What is going on? The NBA season is done, and that's just sad, isn't it? Oh, no. But it's all right, because there's always next year, baby, and that's what today's show is going to focus on. Mostly, we are going to discuss every contender. I'm not going to talk about every damn team and do a power rankings 1 through 30, because that's just boring. But there are, I mean, it's, it's a new era, man. This is no longer the years of the NBA, where it's like only three or four teams every year and we don't know who's going to be able to compete this is uh there's about eight to ten significant teams each year now that are most likely going to have an opportunity to win and that's definitely the case next year including the draft free agency but just with the new cba it's just harder and harder for dynasties to exist and we shall discuss which teams that i think are right on the cusp and what exactly do they need to do in order to maybe have a chance next year so we'll discuss next year it's not all every year is a new year man we can always keep going baby oh yeah and then you got to enjoy that. So we shall discuss that in just a little bit. Do have to give the flowers though. The Denver Nuggets did it, didn't they? The Denver Nuggets and Big Dumb Jokic did it, didn't they? They won the whole freaking thing. Denver Nuggets. What a team. What an exciting team of exciting players, not really, but they got it done. Congratulations to the Nuggets. Holy shit. Wife celebrating. Daughter out there. Yeah. There's something cool about what he's doing right here, though. And uh, I will say this, as, again, they are the NBA champs. Oh, good for you. Cruise through the NBA playoffs just kind of made everyone their bitch in the entire way. And it wasn't like he had the easiest road, Jokic and Murray and the boys. No, no, no. They had to go through a tough Timberwolves. They had to go through and sweep the Lakers. They had to beat the Phoenix Suns, who a lot of you had as the favorites, even though I done told you they weren't going to do it. They're too damn top-heavy. I'll discuss what Phoenix is going to have to do in just a little bit. See, I done told you. I done told you. But if you watch that video, what I like about this as it's besides the fact that it's cute with the wife and the daughter, Jokic being a family man, as we've discussed, and a lot of people have ad nauseum. He points to his finger for his daughter for a lullaby that they sing. Very family-oriented, ties the wedding ring to his shoe in order to remind himself of what's important. But the cool thing about what he did here, he had just won the NBA Finals. You know, this should be the culmination in me, me, me. And he really took his time after this to give respect to the fallen, to the Miami Heat. And notice he he take, he goes out. He's not celebrating. He's not you know jumping on the 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 announcer's table or doing anything nuts. He makes sure to go out of his way to shake every Miami Heat player's hand. I love that. I like that a lot. I mean, Denver's a mile high, if you know what I mean. They're all going, hoo-hoo. They're, they're ready to get down. They caused some violence, of course, in the championship celebration. But look at them. All the way down to the bench, guys. Hey, good job. Dap them up. Job well done. All that. All that. Even guys who, I mean, didn't even damn play. So, I mean, there's there's a likability factor with these guys. I really had no problem with Denver other than they're just kind of boring. But, I mean, they're the new Spurs, uh, and they they really do remind me, and a lot of you are starting to jump on that bandwagon finally because I told you this a while ago. This is the new age Spurs. Man, I'm tired of being right. Even uh, I heard uh, PTI and others, and then even Wilbon being like, oh, Kornheiser, I really haven't heard that yet. Well, you should listen to this and tune in and go to Tricky Guy Sports and put it on Spotify and put it on YouTube and all that other nonsense I'm supposed to beg you to do. But, 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 yes, they did get it done. They are the NBA champs. And, I mean, look, Jokic and Murray 
have the statistical numbers to argue that they are right up there with Kobe and Shaq, their playoff run was redonkulous. It was redonkulous. It was executed well from the beginning, from the start of the year. They were the first team in the West. They only lost like four games the entire playoffs, and that one-two combo was just killing cats. I mean, look at these. This is this is your top two in the league right now. Just pick and roll you. As you can see here, a little, little backcourt back and forth, 380 assists combined. The most by any duo in the entire NBA all year. Continued to roll in the playoffs. Not going to see any windmills. You're not going to see any, you know, really goofy plays. I mean, yes, you know, he's able to throw it down the field or down uh, to the outlet pass a little bit. But just a lot of this. Just a lot of two-man game. Dribble handoffs. Just know each other well after six, seven years of playing together. And, uh, yeah, they, they just got it done. You, Nikola Jokic just went insane. I mean, he really did. As, as much as I love to tease for him being just big, dumb Cooper man. I like win. I like sing daughter. I like ride horse. I go Serbia. I ride horse. Big carriage. Big carriage for, for Nikola. I, I, I drink beer. I do all this. I don't really work on ab crunch. Ab crunch for babies. I go out. I just shoot goofy shot. And little man Murray give me ball good. I like when he give me ball good. I, but he, he went bananas. Nikola Jokic went bananas in this NBA playoffs. I mean, he really should have earned his third MVP. The only reason he didn't, as people are starting to admit, is A, it would have put him in a rare you know category of only three or four other guys that have done it. But he's just a big, slow, goofy goober. and Because he's white. Because he's white. Because he is white. Look at him, man. I mean, mean, Embiid really did get a lot of love specifically because we really didn't want to give a third MVP in a row to Jokic and also because he's just goofy. I mean, look, we're all having revisionist history, but the fact is, Nikola Jokic was, you know, I mean, the 41st overall pick. He is now the lowest drafted, by the way, NBA player to ever win finals MVP. The next closest was Dennis Johnson at 29th. So, I mean, this is the only second-round guy ever to be a finals MVP. Even at the All-Star game, you know, the genius himself, the greatest basketball mind of all time, in case y'all forgot, did not even pick Nikola Jokic until the very final pick was kind of thrown at him. This, the one that we're all being like, oh, Nicole's the best player. How do y'all not know? I've known for a long time. No, 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 Yeah, right. Even LeBron, the so-called genius of the NBA, remember this? Didn't even pick him until the very last pick. You know, in the All-Star games now in the NBA, they do it like pickup ball. Like, you take him, you take him, you take him. Nicola was the last one and had some fun with it. But, I mean, fact is, it just is what it is. There were just two starters left up here. Uh-oh. LeBron? <laughs> I mean, you already know with my last pick I'm going with Mr. Triple Double himself right here Nikola Jokic yeah even, even, the, even the greatest basketball mind who's ever existed real man of genius Picked guys, you know, way before him. I mean, look at some of the names up there, by the way, in the background. Guys like Pascal Siakam, DeMontis Sabonis, Jaron Jackson, Julius Randle, Tyrese Halliburton. Those guys were all picked before Nikola Jokic, but yet the entire NBA saw this coming. (laughs) Okay. But he is Mr. Triple-Double. I will say that. I mean, the fact is he had 10 triple-doubles, 8 in a 12-game span in the playoff run, destroying Wilt Chamberlain's former record of 7 triple-doubles. Wilt Chamberlain. I mean, that's pretty gosh darn impressive. I mean, he really has entered a new stratosphere. Had games in the playoff run where he had 53 and 11 in game four against Phoenix. Remember that one? He was the first player ever to have a 30 point, 20 rebound, 10 assist, triple double in finals history with 32, 21, and 10 in game three at Miami. He was again able to eliminate, you know, the Edwards, Anthony Towns, uh, the uh, Minnesota Twin or Minnesota Timberwolves, excuse me. Then went on to beat Booker and KD in Phoenix, swept LA before dispatching with Butler in Miami. I mean, he just went bananas. He was the first guy ever, ever to lead the NBA in the playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists in the same postseason. <laughs> He is the first player ever to have 500 points, 250 rebounds, and 150 assists in a single postseason. He is only the third player ever to average 30 points, 10 assists, and nine assi- or 10 rebounds and nine assists in a single postseason. Only the third one ever to do that. 
He is the fourth center ever in NBA history. Now, in NBA history, to earn multiple MVPs in the regular season and a finals MVP, joining Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, and Moses Malone. I mean, he's put himself in rare, you know, rare air. I mean, the, the, the ring is the thing. It does, in the end, solidify and put you up in that next category. And this big Serbian goober, who has just got to be the worst interview in the history of interviews, is now the face of the league. I'm kind of curious to what Adam Silver thinks about having this big old duh, duh. Uh, as good as he is and as great as the Nuggets run was, their first finals ever and championship in 47 years, the longest in the NBA to ever, you know, franchise to have to wait that long. But if you listen to him talk, and I'm going to talk about in just a second here, you know, eventually what's good for next year, but let's at least give the flowers this year to the champion and the, you know, so-called now best player in the league. Listening to him talk, he, you know, he doesn't really care about any of this. It doesn't seem like. Nikola Jokic, I think, plays basketball as a job. I don't really think he loves it, to be quite honest. It, uh, listen, to, listen to this. They, I mean, I, I put together a compilation of some of Nicole Jokic's best, you know, quotes here during the finals as they're trying to get anything involving a personality out of this guy. And he's just like, yeah, I like horses. I like, I like things. I like daughter. I like Serbia. Um, you said after the Lakers win, you said you were surprised that you didn't feel more. So I'm curious what you are feeling right now. And if you're looking forward to a parade coming up in Denver. When is parade? Yes. When is parade? Thursday. No. <laughs> I need to go home. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, nobody likes his, uh, his job, or maybe they do. They're lying. Uh, How have you grown and what have you learned from being a dad? And have you noticed any of those skills translating to being a better basketball player? Nah. <laughs> no, that cannot help you. I congratulations. I'm going to see the huge destiny, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, oh, my, my. How many texts do you have? A lot. A lot. I know, I'm not going to. I'm going to turn off the phone. You're the fourth player in NBA Finals history to record the line that you had today, joining like LeBron, uh, KD, and Tim Duncan. Uh, what, do, what do you think about when you hear that? It's not a big 23, 12, and 4. Fourth ever, the 23, 10, and 4. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, nice. It's good. Uh, I mean, I don't really don't know, don't know what to say. Now, I am with them on that last part about really 23, 10, and 4. That was kind of a weird stat to kind of put him into a certain category. But, I mean, the guy earned a lot of those categories that put him up at the tippy top. And besides that, he was bitching about the parade, which a lot of people played. I mean, this quote here to me was bananas where he's basically saying like, Look, man, it's just a job, and who actually likes doing their job? No one, really. I, I was uh, fascinated by that one. Let me let me go ahead and get back to that. When is parade? Thursday. Yeah. No. Oh no. <laughs> I need to go home. I need go home, <laughs> ride horse. Me have no time. But this is the quote I want to talk about. It was right after this. He's talking about being an NBA champion and being an NBA basketball player, which a lot of people you would think would kill for. And Nicola seems pissed off. He has to do it. Oh, I have to not eat uh, burger. I have to eat salad. It's bull crap. I want to just ride horse, drink beer, and just live on my fart house in Serbia. Okay. You know, nobody likes his uh, his job, or maybe they do. They're lying. You know, nobody likes his uh, his job, or maybe they do. They're lying. You know, nobody likes his uh, his job, or maybe they do. They're lying. I mean, some people you would think would like being an NBA champion, and this guy's like, uh, I don't know. I ain't got a good, good, good brain. I don't want to go to parade. I don't like parade. I Unless I can ride carriage through, I don't want to go to stinking parade. I just want to go home to Serbia, the greatest country in the world. Ask anyone except people from Serbia and everyone else who has an opinion. Other than that, I say greatest country. Go home. 
Big Jokic phone home. That's our guy. That's our big champion. So there you go. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. As, again, I really do think they are the new San Antonio Spurs. Do I think they'll repeat? No. But I do think they're going to be around for a while. The fact is, you might as well go ahead and get used to these guys. They're going to be around here for a little bit. They are now um, put themselves in that spot. But, I mean, their starting lineup is returning. Just so you know, the, the Nuggets are going nowhere. Um, their entire starting five of Jokic, Murray, Pope, Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon are all under contract through at least 24, 25. They're all 29 years and younger of age. They are all in their prime. They have that small market, again, led by the big dummy. It's so reminiscent of the San Antonio Spurs that used to be bane of my existence. I hate. I hate. I hate. They are back in full force. They'll be back again next year. Uh, can they do it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. But just to give you an idea of how hard it is now and now in today's NBA to repeat when we had so much of it going on, there's now been in five years, one, two, three, four, five different champions. It's the first time since 1971. And for some of us who don't want to remember, that's 50 years ago. Jesus Christ, does that make you feel old or what? 50 years ago was the last time we saw one, two, three, four, five champions in one, two, three, four, five seasons. It is much harder to repeat. It is much harder to have a dynasty. But when you look at this team of a bunch of big, silly, kind of not that much personality, small market, not that exciting to watch, but yet they're just going to grind you down and wear you around and are foreign led, you know, serve you up good. We like the, the, the. You know, this is the Spurs all over again. You might as well get used to it. Ball movement, team basketball, no, you know, ego, well coached, great fan base. But again, just kind of bleh when it comes to having an opinion or anything exciting. They just don't seem to have it other than they come home with the damn ring and they usually don't do it back to back. Spurs never did it back to back, but they just stuck around like cockroaches. Nuggets are the news, Spurs slash cockroaches led by the biggest one of all. That's the biggest cockroach you're going to find out there, and they're going to be around for a while. But, 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 we can get into what's going to happen next year. What's going to happen next year? Because there is going to be a lot of opportunity for other teams to dethrone and now hopefully make it six different champions in six years. Oh, yeah! So let's let's take a look, shall we? Let's go ahead. I'm going to run real quickly through the teams that I think have the best opportunity and what they have to do. All right, so we're going to make this real easy. I'm going to give you about eight to nine teams here, East and Western Conference. I'm not going to pick in a conference. I'm just going to tell you the teams that I think have the best opportunity to dethrone the Denver Nuggets and exactly how they're going to get it done. Are you ready? Good. Here we go. And I read. I'll start off with Boston. Um, Boston, honestly, is a lot like Denver and about one or two other teams I see out there. Run it back. Uh, do not do, don't do it. Don't get into being a prisoner of the moment. Do not become an idiot and tell yourself that just because you went to the NBA Finals last year and you didn't win, and this year you were one game away from the NBA Finals and arguably one Jason Tatum ankle sprain away, that you suddenly need to get rid of Jalen Brown, you need to blow up the team, and that you need to go ahead and rebuild or restructure or remake, you know, reinvent the wheel. That is stupid. Ask like the Houston Rockets, who never won, but they were close. Ask, you know, a lot of these teams that, you know, decide to make a big decision or a big move because they got close but no cigar and didn't give themselves the opportunity to go ahead and push themselves to that championship threshold. You know, Denver just a few years ago is a perfect example. Denver had Murray out. You know, he had his injuries. They were worried. Was he going to be able to come back and be who he was? Golden State Warriors just a couple years ago had Clay Thompson down, and they were wondering what could they do there. Boston hasn't been hurt, but they have had some key injuries at key times. Robert Williams went down in the finals last year. He, again, had Tatum sprained his ankle at the, the most inopportune time in a Game 7. This is not time to panic. This is not time to rebuild. You don't need to get rid of Jalen Brown. That's all stupid. That's dopey talk. That's <laughs> dopey dumb dumb talk. I mean, look at your age alone. Do you understand if you're a Boston fan? Let me go ahead and hit you with this one. This These facts, wicked hot. The uh, Boston Celtics are just like Denver in that their whole core is young. You don't break up a young core that is this close to go ahead and pulling off the whole thing. Only one out of 30 
win the whole thing. You do understand that, right? I mean, the fact is, Jason Tatum's only 25. Derek White's only 28. You got both Williams, Grant, and Robert, 24 and 25. Jalen Brown is 26. And to put that in perspective, you know, because uh, your best players, Tatum is 25, Brown is 26. It's not like everyone is a Kobe or Magic and wins their first championship right out of the gate. You do realize Michael Jordan didn't win his first championship until he was 28 years old. Steph Curry did not win his first championship until he was 27 years old. Kevin Durant did not win his first title until he was 28 years old. LeBron James did not win his first title until 27. So, 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 considering that your two best players, Tatum and Brown in their core, are all under the ages of MJ, Steph, KD, or LeBron before they won their first NBA title, I sincerely don't think it's time to panic. What does that do? Does that blow your mind? I mean, that's that's really all I need to say there. And uh, I would just keep the core together, you know, try to retweak the bench, get some size, and you guys will be all right. You'll be able to come back out of the East wicked hide, and you'll be able to see if you're able to knock off the uh, the big Serb over there and the bunch of, bunch of jokers. Bunch of jokers out there in Denver, they get all high on the ganja. Need to go ahead and just have a lager. Go to the bar. Stay off that weed. Go to the bar. I love weed, okay? I love it. Boston Celtics is one of the silliest accents. Boston City, that accent. I, we'll move on. Golden State Warriors are my favorite team, and they were a champion just two years ago, but they just did have it this year. Oh, good for you. Um, They're going to have to go big. I mean, that's the big thing I see with the Golden State Warriors. They have huge decisions this offseason for the first time ever in this run of Steph, Clay, and Dre and crew, what are they going to do as far as one of the big three? And this is just how life goes, man. One of the big three is most likely, and I'll predict it might be Clay Thompson. And it's gone. I, I don't think so. The only reason I think that Golden State might not get rid of Clay Thompson is because there is a new general manager. And if you're the new general manager and you just got the job in Golden State, who's had five championships in nine years and multiple finals appearances as well as that, I mean, they've had an historic run with this core. I, I think Draymond does get re-signed because they love him too much, and even though he's the bane of my existence, I, I do think he'll stick around. And Clay, you know, is getting older, and he does have his injuries making him not the defensive presence he once was. He still had great statistical year, even though he was more streaky than we're used to seeing with Clay. But back to the issue of if you're the new general manager and you just got hired, do you have the balls, the marbles the bowling ball sized levels necessary to get rid of clay thompson as one of your first moves as a new general manager in golden state and see how that plays out if that doesn't work out you're you're pretty much the devil I mean, you're pretty much Satan on earth. You're the worst. You're the one who blew up the greatest, you know, era they've ever had in their entire franchise history. There's no way you can get around the fact that you are just Satan himself. Devil 666, the mark of the beast. So the big thing will be Jordan Poole. Now, Jordan Poole, what can they do with Jordan Poole? I don't know. I don't know what his value is, but I think he's the one who would be the most of the, you know, favorites to be traded. But the Golden State Warriors with an average height of six foot six inches are going to have to go big they have the number 19 pick in the nba draft and there's a guy that is right now in that mock draft area named Derek lively out of duke mark this down right now if the golden state warriors can go get Derek lively out of duke at number 19 oh we got a problem Western Conference, Denver Nuggets, even though he would be a rookie, that would be very interesting to see. But the rest of it's going to be tough with the new CBA and everything going on. I don't know if they can keep their main three guys. Steph's obviously not going nowhere, but Clay or Dre could be gone next year, along with Dante DiVincenzo and a couple other guys I like. But if they can kind of just get a big, like a veteran big, and then get a Derek Lively at 19, it'll be a lively year for the Golden State Warriors, who still have about two, three years left of trying to make this an actual chance to go ahead and win next year. Coming up next, I'll just mention real quick the L.A. Clippers. They only had the 30th and the 40th, 48th pick in the NBA draft, and they're most likely going to have to re-sign Russell Westbrook, who, I mean, 
Here we go again. Same thing with Russ. You know, he had some good points. He had some bad. And when he's good, he's good. And when he's bad, he is holy hell bad. But, 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 they do have the new owner, you know, the last few years. They they have uh, one of the only owners in the world that is willing to drop all the big boy bucks in order to keep his team together so you don't see Kawhi or Paul George going anywhere. They got the new stadium out there with all the toilets in the world. You can pee all over the place. You can pee in this toilet. You you can pee in that toilet. 9,000 toilets for 8,000 people in each section. It's toilets galore. You can just, everyone's going to be just happily peeing. It's going to be the most wonderful thing ever. So they they have a lot of things to be excited about in L.A. You don't want to go ahead and take too far of a step backwards. I think Russell Westbrook, as crazy and inconsistent as he can be, did have good moments there. I still don't really put y'all in playoff contention as far as titles, but you're a good team, and with those three guys, you have an opportunity to see what you can do. I'll throw you in as a quick mention there. The bigger team and the one we really need to discuss is the L.A. Lakers. The L.A. Lakers and my favorite guy, Mr. LeBron James, who is not retiring. So just miss me with that bull crap. He is not retiring. He's just being the drama queen, the narcissistic attention whore that he needs to be in the offseason sometimes when things aren't going his way. It's just what he does. Oh, did I lose? Let me let me be over dramatic and make it about me. Here we go again. Because it's just what I do. He'll be back. Anthony Davis will be back. I do think the big uh, free agent moves are clearly you got to be re-signing Rui. And then you got to keep one of the only decent white boys in the league currently right now, Mr. Austin Reeves. It's all right. Be careful with the Taylor Swift curse. We talked about that before. He has been seen with Taylor. That could be, you know. We don't know. But to be honest and to be serious here, so you got Austin, Rui, LeBron, AD. You do have the number 17 pick this year, which could be useful, and the number 47 pick in the NBA draft. The L.A. Lakers, though, to me, have one move and one move only. It's not trading for Trey Young. It's not trying to go get Bradley Beal. You don't have the assets, to be honest. You don't have the picks anymore. You don't have the value on your bench other than, like, you know, literally a LeBron or AD who is not going to be able to obviously keep you in contention if you had to trade one of them. There's one move. There's one move only, and I do think it's going to happen. So go ahead and mark this down. As soon as the Phoenix Suns wave Chris Paul and you are the L.A. Lakers, you go get him and you give yourself your best chance to make a playoff run. I know he's had injury-prone issues in the playoffs and everything else, but he's a banana boat buddy. You go get Chris Paul, even at 38 years old. He's better than D'Angelo Russell. You're gonna have to, you can clear up some cap space letting go of D'Angelo Russell. You now go Chris Paul, Austin Reeves, Rui Echimura, LeBron James, Anthony Davis as your starting five. Hopefully with the number 17 pick, you could do something useful with it. You get some ring chasers and people that love Los Angeles and suddenly the LA Lakers come playoff time. They're going to be up and down in the regular season, most likely with rest and injuries and just being older and all the drama that comes with them. But if you go get Chris Paul, and that is your only option if you are a Los Angeles Lakers fan, you have one thing you need to do in this offseason. It's go get CP3. It's go get one of LeBron's banana boat buddies. It's to reinvigorate that starting five to where you're going to be a top-heavy team, but you'll still be good enough to make a push like you did this year at the end of the season that's the only way to do it if you're an LA Lakers fan and team go get Chris mark my words I said it just now I am the smartest man alive (laughs) next team I want to discuss who has an opportunity to win the NBA title next year is the Memphis Grizzlies the Memphis Grizzlies and all of their silliness and all of their issues They really do still have a very good shot if they can get past what's going to be the early suspension with John Morant. And that is going to be the big story all next year is the well-deserved suspension that is upcoming for John Morant. I do have to show you this. Internet is undefeated. John Morant... And all of his issues and showing a gun again, which he tries to say is a toy gun, but if it was a toy gun, wouldn't you have said that right from the beginning? And once again, it's just showing that he's learned no lessons, and this is like the seventh stupid thing that he's done, many of which involved gun, or trying to break the law, or trying to be a thug, or trying to keep it real. And he has become a national joke, whether he wants to admit it or not. The internet is undefeated, and John Morant is no 
different from any of that. The internet is undefeated, and John Morant is definitely a victim of it. I got to show you this compilation that has been coming down because Adam Silver has already said after the finals. So we're going to know in the next few days, I've got a big boy suspension basically coming for John Morant. And <laughs> let me let me cut to this real quick. Uh, this is just too great. Internet just killed him. First of all, this is uh, yeah. I'll just show you each one one at a time. Let me let me go ahead and start. It says John ja Morant first return game highlights. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Someone put together a video game compilation of him somehow dribbling to basketball, playing Call of Duty. John Morant return game highlights. You really have to see this tricky guy sports. Go ahead and YouTube search it. Ay, ay, ay. In this opening round series, Morant. Oh! Highlights of John Morant's first game back. Next one up is when Silver drops the punishment. God damn! Why you do that to me, man? Why you give me a part of Uh, uh, internet's good, man. Internet's good. They're not done yet. This is more, again, just John Morant compilation with his upcoming suspension. Fifteen. This is... <laughs> How many games will John Morant be suspended? This is a good one. I love this movie. How many games will John Morant be suspended? Let's see. Fifteen. Thirty. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Do -do 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 -do. Effective immediately. I am banning Ja Morant for life. Boy, yo, Jim, yo, die. Dylan Brooks to Ja Morant. This one was good too. The last one. This is Dylan Brooks talking to Ja Morant, apparently. Boy, yo, Jim, yo, die. What's your Guan win? Well, yo, you and Boo Fan Chi. Internet's undefeated, man. Internet is undefeated. But, yes, in all seriousness, though, the Memphis Grizzlies and John Morant, that's going to be the big thing is, there, is the Jaws suspension, how long. They do have the Desmond Bain extension, and we'll see how that goes along there as well. Dylan Brooks, by the way, is gone, and I don't think anyone is going to miss him, speaking of that last little joke video. And it's gone. Uh, good riddance to bad rubbish. Enjoy China. Enjoy being anywhere besides the NBA, you unbelievable, just ridiculous douchebag who earned every bit of the negative energy that has now gone your way. Seriously, that guy sucks out loud. Douchebag says what? I, I hope what? seriously no NBA team even takes on that head case there. But Memphis got rid of him. They're going to have to replace Dylan Brooks, who was, by the way, the NBA's least efficient volume shooter in the entire league. Worse than Russell Westbrook because he's just a one-sided, bear-poking, attention-needy, unbelievably overrated, never should have opened his mouth in the first damn place and just gone ahead and known his role and shut his mouth. Douchebag says what? But he couldn't do it, now he's out of Memphis. So what is Memphis going to do with him? We'll see, the John Morant suspension and all that. But when all is said and done and the smoke clears, as long as, you know, Ja puts a silencer on it, you know, after all that is done, at the second half of the season, when and if he's back and if they are ready to make a run, the Memphis Grizzlies were number two in the West. They, they are a young team who does have a lot of talent and are, you know, being able to galvanize maybe on this whole, like, oh, poor us routine. We shall see. But that's obviously the big stuff going out of there. Let me go ahead and throw some love to the now fallen opponents, the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat are also in the same camp of they got one thing they can do and one thing only. But let me go ahead and give them some love. You know, it's too bad that it happened. Damn, Daniel. I did love you guys. I loved your story. Again, I love Jimmy Butler. 13 years old, kicked out of the home, grinded his whole life to get here. I loved having six undrafted free agents go on this miracle run along with Jimmy. Jimmy and his misfit toys, his island of misfit undrafted free agents, made it all the way through the Eastern Conference, going through the number one seed Milwaukee Bucks, going through the number two seed Boston Celtics, the very, very good, could be good next year New York Knicks, and, you know... 
I mean, made this miracle, this whole thing, and got themselves all the way to the NBA Finals, and they had it 1-1 in the series, and they I knew they were going to lose, but I tried to tell you that, but a lot of you didn't listen. You really thought Cinderella was going to exist, Sea Biscuit was going to win the race one more time, Rocky was going to knock out Apollo, this was going to be the year, and you're just not there yet. The fact is, and I told you that from the beginning, you're just not there yet, and your season was done. And it's gone. And that's okay, because you put yourself in the limelight. Jimmy Butler's got himself back in the limelight. I love me some Jimmy Butler. I thought this was odd. Jimmy Butler did say this, though, because he's trying to, you know, reemphasize the fact that he's a team-first guy. He's not about himself. I thought this was odd. They asked him about when you get to the Hall of Fame, which he most most likely will, even with, you know, whatever he's already done. And Miami Heat fans, I promise I'll tell you the move, the only move you need to make. There's one move you need to make, and you'll be right there for the next few years. But they asked Jimmy about this, and would you want to go to the Hall? I thought this was a bit LeBron-ish and, like, overdramatic and relax. We get it. You're a team first guy. We understand. Your good friend Dwayne Wade's going into the Hall of Fame in a couple months. Have you allowed yourself to think what it would ever mean to you to be elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame? Yes, I have. And what do you think? Don't care. You don't care whether you're a Hall of Famer? No, I don't. Do you think your resume? Still don't care. Honestly speaking, could care less. If we're being brutally honest, uh, if I was selected to the Hall of Fame, I'm not going. You're not going to accept it? No, no, no. I'm not going. Like It's like the festivities and all of that. I just want to like... I just want to, like, go put my feet in the sand somewhere. That's it. You wouldn't accept that honor, the greatest honor in basketball? Uh, It's an individual thing, you know? I'm not for the individual type stuff. I'm really not. Uh, I'm like a team guy. But even after it's all said and done and you've done No, that. I don't want to go. I don't, I'm not worried about the Hall of Fame, so oh. I promise you. It's an honor, it is, but hmm, I could care less. I mean that, too, by the way. I mean, maybe he means it. And, Jimmy, I love you. And we get you're a team guy. But, seriously, we'll just I, go ride a horse carriage with Nicola then. You know, all these NBA guys suddenly don't care about anything. You know, it, it's it's just this new age to me. A lot of this, like, oh, I don't care about anything but the team. I am the most team guy in the world. I don't even – I give all my money away to my teammates. I just don't I care, care about any individual. I'm care. just the most team, 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 I team, care. team. Team this, team that. I don't even use the letter I. I've taken I. I'm like a crypt that only says C words with B words in front or whatever they do. I don't care about being a... Relax. Relax, dude. It's fine. You could admit you're, you know, you would maybe... It'd be kind of cool, you know, to, to, you know, Jokic, it's kind of cool to be in the NBA. You know, Jimmy Butler, it's kind of cool to go to the Hall of Fame. You don't have to... You can still be a team guy and accept some sort of personal praise. Jesus H. Christ. But... He is better as the number two when you come to a championship contender. The fact is Miami Heat were just a player short. They 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 have some good stuff there. They got a good core. They got guys like Struess and Vincent who are going to have to be re-signed, but most likely you can get for you know not too much money there. And they do have the bird rights, whatever it is, on Struess and Vincent. And Gabe Vincent was huge in the NBA Finals. Struess was good here and there. Um, they have an opportunity to move past their own salary cap to keep them, so I think they do do that. You still have Bam. You still have Jimmy. Um, the big thing, the only thing that's going to make Miami a contender, as, again, the Trey Young and Bradley Beal names come up, no. No, 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 no. There's one move, and there's one move only. It has been rumored. It has already been um, gone ahead and said by the person I'm going to bring up here that he would like to actually maybe have this happen. Brian Windhorst and others have already reported that they are looking at making this move. You have one opportunity to give yourself a three- to four-year window. You go get Damian Lillard. That's it. End of story. I don't want to hear the rest. If you are the Miami Heat, you have one job and one job this offseason. That is to trade whatever you can, not name Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo, and you go get Damian Lillard, and you take the rest of your misfit toys, and you put yourself a three- to four-year window. You go get it done. You give them one opportunity to do it, and that's the only way you're going to do it, is you go get Damian Lillard. I like that idea, and I will support it. Thank you. I agree, because it's the only way you really, that three together, with Bam and Damian already being friends and Jimmy being the dog and the killer that he is and he wouldn't have to be an offensive option all the time, which he really doesn't seem to like. You know, Mr. Team doesn't want to do anything personal. He wants to, you know, whatever.
whatever. That three, though, as a combo in the Eastern Conference, would it, I mean, other than Milwaukee, be my favorites every single time for the next few years to make a run in the playoffs? The Miami Heat with Damian Lillard, Bam, and Jimmy Butler uh, is it. That's it. That's the only way to do it. You have one thing to do. Go get it done. I like that idea, and I will support it. And I've even worked out. You know, there is a trade. I did the trade machine thing. You can, uh, according to the contracts, and work it out. I don't know if they would do it, but Kyle Lowry and Caleb Martin do work in a straight-up trade for, you know, Damian Lillard, which I don't even think. If that actually happened, I'd be like, really? Is this real life? I mean, Portland would have to be really on some good weed to go ahead and make that trade. But you can do something, though, with Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry and and maybe a draft pick or two. That's something I think that is more logical is to work out a trade where you give Portland some point guard and say, look, here's Tyler. He's a blue blood. You know, turns out we can, you know, we have some success without him. And he's a talented guy who can give you, you know, some leadership going into the future, but still young enough in Portland to have your young core. We have Kyle Lowry here, you know, so maybe take a first round, our number 18 overall first first round pick something around that would be the only thing I would I mean the main thing I would offer but if I'm Miami I'm opening the cupboard for anything that they want besides again Jimmy or Bam anything else have at it we need those three together we need them together for the next few years because that would give us the best opportunity in the Eastern Conference to consistently be a favorite and to go ahead and give Jimmy his championship maybe then he'll finally go to the Hall of Fame (sighs) whatever we don't. Oh, I don't want. I don't want to do parades. I don't like being an NBA player. I'm a big dumb Serbian. I don't want to go to the Hall of Fame. I'm a team first guy. I don't want to admit I like anything personal. Frustrating. It's frustrating. Mm. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Milwaukee Bucks, as I continue to roll with some teams, I think, and what could they do next offseason? I will say this quickly: Milwaukee Bucks just need to run it back. They obviously need a new coach. That is absolutely brutal to this day. Jesus Christ, you fired your coach who had the most successful five-year window, at least statistically in, like, history damn near, in Budenholzer, and you did it the, the week that his brother was killed in a car crash. How the hell are you going to get fired on your day off? Phoenix Suns, know. by the way, fired Monty Williams, and very similar. His wife has breast cancer. It's now his second wife to have major issues. He had a wife five years ago die in a car crash. He now has a new wife. She has breast cancer, and they fired him in, uh, you know, just because he wasn't able to have a successful title run when he had a team together for like a whole three damn weeks. Coaches have it rough, man. How the hell are you going to get fired on your day off? It, it, I don't know. Mm, I don't know either. It, it's a rough life for coaches all this mental health and all this and we got to worry about the players you know nah, nah, nah. For some reason we don't give a damn about coaches mental health they're going through major tragedies and we'll just can their ass like it's nothing you're fired i i mean jesus christ but milwaukee bucks to, in order to come back just just run it back Giannis got hurt at an inopportune time everyone wants to call it this huge upset Giannis's back was hurt um chris middleton was also hurt he's having knee surgery get them healthy bring your core back they do have some big Bottom tier free agents, Jay Crowder, Ingles, Carter, Matthews, and you'll have to figure all that out. But as long as you come back with Holiday, come back with Giannis, you come back. Oh, Lopez. Brooke Lopez, though, is, um, excuse me, an unrestricted free agent. You bring back Brooke Lopez. You do not even screw around with that. If he wants, you know, pretty close to a bag, you give him a damn bag. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. Pat Middleton pick up his $40 million player option. You have Brooke Lopez come back on a new deal. You bring back the basically the main core. You fill out your bench, and you run it back again with your new coach. Hopefully, you know, if he doesn't have a good season, you don't fire him right after his whole family gets killed in some horrible plane crash or something. Jesus Christ. Good Lord. NBA coaches have it rough. Another team that has it rough, and I will mention quickly, Philadelphia 76ers. Philadelphia 76ers should be one of your favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference, but it all comes down to a bearded, aloof, getting older, hit or miss. He's either really great or he's really bad James Harden. Your whole, your whole, you know, your opportunity all comes down to will James Harden stay, and the fact is, the rumors are that he's not. Oh, no. He's going to go ahead and seek his big boy money and go to somewhere, because James likes to win, but I don't think it's really the biggest thing in his life. I, I, I think he'd rather go ahead and get that bag, so Houston Rockets are actually the place that is most rumored currently. Oh, no. And you should say, oh, no, because you have no draft picks. Did you know that, 76ers fans and other Eastern Conference fans? 
of other teams. Do you know the 76ers have no settle draft picks? I mean, that's just crazy. Oh, no. He lost it in the Harden trade and also due to some sort of penalties on free agency and doing things shadily or whatever, they penalized them. So Sixers have no drafts. Nothing in the draft to come to, to, to uh, you know, restock the cupboard, as it would be. And uh, basically, yeah, so you have Embiid, you know, your MVP, who I, I already can almost promise you is going to get into a, you know, you need to play a little more like uh, Nikola Jokic. You need to go ahead and uh, be the center point of the offense. Uh, monkey see, monkey do. You saw a lot of teams do this with Golden State. Oh, you guys need to play more like Steph Curry. We need to go small. We need to do all this. I guarantee the 76ers, first thing they're going to do is try to somehow turn you know, Embiid into the one of one weird, odd horse riding creature that is Nikola Jokic and maybe try to run the offense more through him. I think that's a terrible idea and I don't think it's going to work. That's dopey talk. That's dopey dumb dumb talk. But, you know, trying to keep James Harden, and even if you do, it's going to be hit or miss, but it's the only shot you got. But if he declines his player option and leaves in free agency, you guys don't really have much else to rely on. You don't have any draft picks to either get or trade. You don't really have a roster that you can do a lot with. The process is basically at its peak, at its culmination, and this is it. You're going to ride or die. Hopefully, somehow you get James to stay and you roll with that crew and see how the rest of the teammates feel about Embiid basically blaming all them in the uh, last game of the season after they lost, basically saying, well, it's not my fault. It's not James' fault. It doesn't matter that we, you know, didn't really play that well at the end and in the most important games. It's all the maxis and all their faults. Douchebag says what? See how what? chemistry goes with that. Um, Phoenix Suns, you know, you, you actually have some big moves. Do you let Chris Paul go, and do you let DeAndre Ayton go? I say yes to both. Uh, again, I think L.A. needs Chris Paul more than Phoenix needs a 38-year-old point guard who's ball-dominant as Devin Booker continues to rise, and now you have Kevin Durant. You're going to the, run the offense through them. And I said it from the beginning, and it proved to be right again because I'm once again right to the point of boredom. Man, I'm tired of being right. Phoenix Suns, you were top-heavy. I told you this as soon as I watched you guys play, even with Kevin Durant, and I watched a couple playoff games, I was like, you guys are too top-heavy. I, you just don't have enough of a bench and, an, and a, a full roster. You don't have enough Bruce Browns and, you know, uh, Christian Browns. And even, you know, going back to last year with Golden State, Otto Porters and Jordan Pools and these guys that can come in and give you a punch. You don't have that coming off your bench, and you need that. As good as Chris Paul... Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are, as usual, Chris Paul went down with injury because that just seems what's to have is to happen to him when you put too much of a workload on him at 38 years old and just his body not being able to hold up. But if you're Phoenix and you're looking at all this, you need to go ahead and take those two guys and the money that you'll now get by letting them go and turn that into four or five guys. You take two good players and... And two players that, you know, command a big boy contract and you let them either go or you sign and trade. You do whatever you can to turn those two into four or five really, you know, solid players and you stack them around Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. Then you have an opportunity to win. Bringing back Chris Paul and going back with this top-heavy, getting older roster, that really is a little bit of a cluster F trying to let Paul and Booker and Durant all run the offense together. You don't really need that. Aiton has talent, but he's disinterested, and he's kind of pissed off about not being a top guy. Either let him go in free agency or sign and trade or do something in order to get him out of your hair and let him go be a 30-point scorer, I don't know, in Detroit or somewhere. And you turn those two into four or five, suddenly you're the Phoenix Suns and you have a real chance. And you really might be the favorite to come out of the West. That's how you do that. Real man of genius. This is the big one for me. This is the most interesting team who I think... Other than not named the Oklahoma City Thunder, who I'll throw in as an honorable mention, we're going to make a lot of surprises, as they will be next year what this team was this year. The Sacramento Kings, I am going to be very, very curious to see what you guys do. The fact is Sacramento Kings have the 24th pick, 38th pick, and the 54th pick this year. They also have still their first round picks in 25, 26, and 27. That is what's known as a lot of trade assets or a lot of good young talent. That is a absolute cupboard to go ahead and build around Fox. Sabonis does need to have his contract extended. He's on the final year. Uh, Keegan Murray as a rookie. You keep Malik Monk. 
And, I mean, after 48 wins, a really pretty solid first-round performance against the Golden State Warriors, you are right on the cusp, and you have assets. You're really the only team of everyone I've mentioned who is young, who has assets, and who has a nice little combination in Sabonis and Darren De'Aaron Fox. i got to start saying his name right. De'Aaron Fox, a.k.a. the number one voted clutch player, was voted Mr. Clutch of the NBA this year. <laughs> You have the coach of the year in Mike Brown. You have all sorts of draft picks in order to go ahead and either, again, bring in more talent and continue to build slowly or make a big move, go get a star, and go ahead and make a run. You're the only one that has a full cupboard. You have an unbelievable fan base. You have, you know, the light, the beam, all of that. Those guys are rabid out there. You have the leadership, the coaching. You have every single thing you need. Sacramento Kings, keeping an eye on you. Keeping an eye on you. So there you go. That's all the contenders, in my opinion. That's what they can do in order to go ahead and make a run next year at the Denver Nuggets. We shall see if any of it gets done, and we'll see if I'm right once again on any of that going forward. But it is the end of the season, and we do have to say goodbye to it. It was a lot of fun. I appreciated it, and we'll see you next year. There we go. Video time. You seen it? You seen it? Don't look at me. Don't look at me, little puppet. Have you seen this? Have you read about this? Matter of fact, I'm looking at the clock. This works out perfectly. So this is always a fun thing I like to do at the end of the show to go ahead and just have some fun, cleanse my palate, and show you either some silly things or things that weren't necessarily that important but are very, very entertaining and should either make you laugh, cringe, or do something. So... This part specifically, you want to go to Tricky Guy Sports on my YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, search Tricky Guy Sports, and watch this part along with us because it's always a lot of fun. Where should I start? Where should I start? Um, Oh, (laughs) announcer flubs. I love announcer flubs. I will start with the uh, appetizer, then get to the main course here. So this is during some baseball game. And I really would like more context, but this announcer is admitting that he met his wife as he was a teacher. I I would really like to know which grade and where and all that. I sure as hell hope it wasn't middle school. Jesus Christ. I actually met my future wife as a substitute teacher. How about that? She was a student at the time. Yeah, I'm going to run that back one more time there. I actually met my future wife as a substitute teacher. How about that? She was a student at the time. Yeah, how about that? Isn't that a great story? Yeah, I helped her out with her science project. And uh, next thing you know, 16 years later, we were married. Oh, Lordy. This one is just more of a true flub, and it's, it's sometimes it's hard. It's sometimes really long and hard to not make certain innuendos as an announcer as you're excited and you get to the game and suddenly you have these long, hard, rigid thoughts that just come thrusting into your ear hole, in and out. And the next thing you know, you say something crazy and you don't even realize you said something crazy or pause-worthy and suddenly you're on the internet forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crabtree, huh? What's Crabtree good at? Blown away by Crabtree's hands. And his ability to suck in these balls. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have you have to say that one more time there, Kyle. Blown away by Crabtree's hands. And his ability to suck in these balls. Pretty good. Pretty solid. Blown away by Crabtree's hands. And his ability to suck in these balls. Just stick my balls in your mouth. Ooh. Moving on. Um, what else do I have here that's a lot of fun uh, besides ball sucking? I did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh, Zion. Oh, I got a quick one with Zion Williamson. Oh, Lordy. And here we go. For those of you that don't remember, Zion Williamson just made the news recently. And not in a good way as he tried to... Um, be sweet and announce he had a baby on the way with his new girlfriend and they had the gender reveal on a YouTube clip which then set off the OnlyFans hooker that he was banging as she just eviscerated him on the internet via Twitter. Hooker! Prostitute! Slut for money! 
and said, yeah, I let you spit in my mouth and you're still going to have to take care of me and I'm late and you raw dog me and you raw dog these hoes and you were raw dogging this and you were raw dogging that. How dare you go back with this broke bitch and bap, 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 bap. I mean, just shots fired left and right, just pew, 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 Yosemite Stam style and really embarrassed him. And all I'm going to say is her name is Mariah and I believe she's from Dallas, Texas or resided in Dallas, Texas for a while as the internet decided to go ahead and make this little clip popular. You never know without context exactly why sometimes things are funny. Brandon Ingram sure did. Brandon Ingram sure did. Check this out. Zion Williamson, come on down to Texas, baby. Apparently you've been down here a few times. Raw. Dallas, baby. Dallas is the best road city. What What are we talking about? Why Dallas? (laughs) Why Dallas? (laughs) Why Dallas, bro? Five Dallas, bro. Dallas <laughs> is amazing. I don't care what nobody tell you. Dallas is amazing. This, I there's. Know. I don't want to be there, but Dallas is amazing. There's so much going on if you know the context of this video and why he was saying all this. That's just my baby, daddy. That's just my baby. Mm. Second part, especially, is huge. Watch Brandon Ingram as he just chuckles and throws his arm around him. I thought this was very, very. Why Dallas? Why Dallas, bro? Why Dallas, bro? Dallas is amazing. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at that face. Why Dallas, bro? What's the, what's up there in Dallas? Having sex. And then go ahead and cut to McCollum in the corner. Look at his eyes. This is even better. Okay, what nobody tell you. Dallas is amazing. Look at his eyes. Hold on. Look at his face. Look look at look at look at McCollum's face. Look at that right there. That is a look of like <laughs> Why Dallas, Zion? What's in Dallas, Zion? <laughs> Young, dumb, and full of dunks, we shall say. Um, da, 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 what else do I want to go ahead and run through here as we are having some fun at the end of the show? I had the ball sucking. I had the inappropriate teacher thing. We had Dion, uh, Zion Raw Dog in Dallas, ladies, and getting caught for it on the internet. Oh, JJ, uh, JJ Reddit killed Stephen A. This is great. I love watching Stephen A. Because Stephen A is one of the, by far, most filler show hosts. And he, he, what it is, Stephen A, look has done a lot, and he's very successful, and he's way more successful than I am. So take this with a grain of salt, Stephen, if you ever see this clip. Fact is, though, you run yourself thin, and you have for a while. You do a lot of things. You have your you know hands in many pots, as it were. And a lot of times, because of all that, you don't maybe have as much focus on each show. So when you go out there sometimes, admit it, it's filler. A lot of what you say is filler. A lot of it is just to extend, you know, you have 30 seconds. Television is very structured. And I've watched him do it. I have watched him, and he's so good at backing up his basic opinion with just more confidence and filler. As far as filler, I mean by, like, you know, Chris Paul is a point guard for the Phoenix Suns in Arizona. He is the lead ball handler. For the team that is currently residing in Phoenix, Arizona. He dribbles the ball and bounces it against the floor. When he bounces it against the floor, the ball then ricochets back into his hand. He takes it from his hand and he flicks his wrist, which then sends the ball back down again. And it once again bounces off the hardwood and comes back. You know what I mean? It's just like, bro, we get it. He dribbles the ball for the Phoenix Suns. You don't have to, you know, go into this expounding nonsense. And so a lot of times he'll say things that have no real backing or facts to go with them. And unfortunately now they've invited J.J. Reddick to be part of their show show and he gets burned and this one he got burned real bad when he came to Nikola Jokic and just got pretty much ethered and this clip went viral so check this out he's talking about Nikola Jokic and JJ with his facts and actually having this as his main focus besides his podcast went ahead and murdered Steven on live television I get you here's my counter to that Jokic isn't known for having some kind of dominant post game now that's not his game Hold on a second. It's, Hold it's on not a his second. game. He's not a dominant. Is he a dominant post player? Is Jokic a Stephen dominant a. post player? St- Stephen A., we've got 10 years of tracking data. You know what the number one most efficient half-court play is in 10 years across the NBA? What? 
on the Kola Jokic post. What is it? There you go. Whoa. Boom. Boom. Whoa. Boom. Hold on, wait, wait. Talk, talk, talk. JJ. 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 I'm done. JJ. I'm done. I'm done. Ben, Daniel. JJ, JJ, JJ. First of all, you played for Duke University. Duke University is, I believe, in North Carolina. You know what I mean? Like he, he I, I, I don't even have to see the rest of it because that's just, that'll do it. That'll do it. Your Honor, I object. And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case. Overruled. Good call. May want to go ahead and study a little more when JJ's on the show there, Stephen. I just saying. Uh, we have discussed a little bit in this show. This is the one of the last ones I'll bring you here. The patriarchy, as it were, or the matriarchy, or the lack thereof. Apparently, you know, ladies have it rough, and I'm not trying to say you don't. I am not going to go ahead and, uh, you know, it's not me telling you that, you know, this, this, this world is perfect. It wasn't me. Ladies do have it rough, even in golf. Even in golf. In Division Three golf, you have to see this. So I've never seen this on the mail side. Let me know if you have a clip or something you could send me to go ahead and uh, let me know if I'm wrong here. But Jesus H. Christ, they had to cancel this tournament in women's golf because some just absolute psycho or just some woman hating maybe just got dumped by his wife recently and she ran off with the kids or something. Someone had something against this Division Three women's golf tournament and felt slighted and decided to get petty and made the green from hell. And when I say the green from hell, you have to see this nonsense. So look at this. They had to cancel the whole tournament because this was just good. Look at this is psychotic. Look at this. Putt. What? Rolls back a little. Rolls back a little. Stop. Doesn't stop. Doesn't stop. Still going. Still going. Look at this psychotic nonsense. All the way back to where, I mean, she did put that. Let's try this again. Six inches away, give or take. There it goes. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. She's further back. Let's try this again, huh? Again, right there. And here it goes. And screw your score. And screw Division Three women's golf. Screw women in general. And I do not like that women golf. My wife likes to golf with me sometimes. So I decided to go ahead and put this pin in literally the worst spot in human history. Yeah, watch that roll back. Watch that roll back. You deserve it. I mean, she damn near sunk this one. The next girl. And there it goes. It's like the most psychotic putt-putt hole of all time. Even she's like, no way the hell is going on we're not done here we go again that's in the hole that is in no it's not and there it goes <laughs> these poor ladies these poor ladies I, I mean just the I mean, how many shots did we need to see this before they finally said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and call this dog? <laughs> it's got, it keeps going back further. <laughs> ah, somewhere there's just some guy. Ha <laughs> ha. You know what? Somewhere there was a greenskeeper and his wife beat him in golf for the first time, or, you know, he bet. Some woman he met who he didn't realize because he thinks that women can't golf for something like a thousand dollars that he didn't have and he lost it. But there was something malicious behind this. I need to know the whole story behind this. Who is the psychotic greenskeeper that decided to punish these poor women who did nothing other than try to go ahead and play some golf, earn a championship, and you know, all the other things? It's crazy. It's a crazy world out there. You never know how the ball's gonna roll, and you never know how we're gonna roll. Hell, I don't know how we're gonna roll, but we'll be back. We always are. See you next time.